Hornby have always been the kings of the train pack, and this one is really something special. Bournemouth Bell, we've got ourselves a spam cam and three Pullman coaches. Let's take a quick look, shall we? Nice to see you again. It's good to have you along here for another Jenny Kirk video here on the channel. And we've got a special, super duper, mega, mega massive uh, box opening and review here today. And this is something that I bought actually at the Model Railway exhibition that I attended uh, a little while ago now at Lee. And uh, we took Grove Street Yard for that. But whilst I was there, I moved up a few bargains. And this in particular really caught my eye because it's something that I've been wanting for so, so long, this particular locomotive. But without further ado, let's get on and take a look. And here it is. This is uh, something very, very special. And it's one of the Hornby train packs. Now, this isn't second hand. I bought it brand new from the model shop. Uh, had a trade stand at the Model Railway Exhibition in Lee. And um, it's had it in stock for a few years. So the price was incredibly keen. Uh, so it predates a lot of the uh, really huge price rises that we've seen from all manufacturers in the last few years. And also I think it was priced to sell very much. So we've got here the R2661M train pack. And that's the Bournemouth Bell. And it's actually, looking at the box, it's actually really difficult to work out what it is just from the picture because Hornby had this generic uh, overlay that slid on top of the box that kind of encompassed everything that you could possibly um, have in one of these. So we've got LNER, LMS, GWR, Southern Railway, British Railways, um, the double arrow logo. It's, it's all going on here. Um, we've got some wasp stripes. We've got the uh, older BR crest, newer BR crest. It's, you know, a bit of everything. But if we turn this over and we look on the back, we get a little bit of a data box down here and that tells us what it is. So we've got our 2661M, the Bournemouth Bell train pack. And there's not really anything else on here, apart from saying this is one of the matched train sets that uh, Hornby had been uh, bringing out and still do bring out. And actually Hornby has been the master of uh, these type of things. Bankman has tried to get in on the act uh, comparatively recently, but certainly uh, not had the throughput that Hornby has. And this is something that Hornby does extremely well. So we slide that outer off. I'm gonna find somewhere to put that down there. And there, immediately, what we can see is the inner box. Here are the goodies. So we've got here our West Country or Battle of Britain class locomotive. And this is in the unrebuilt form. Nicknamed Spam Cans, these things were. Very, very distinctive style. And it sort of came about from this uh, obsession in the 1930s and 40s uh, about having things streamlined, very sleek and sexy. And this is a period that the A4 Pacific was born out of. And that, of course, was on the London and Northeastern Railway. Railway, but the Southern Railway had uh, this kind of style with what they called their air smoothing casing rather than streamlining. And actually in later years, uh, what was found was that actually there was a, a few little niggles and British Rail actually rebuilt a sizable number of the class. And those of you who um, may have been brought up with um, Hornby 00 trains um, as your first train set, such as myself, Hornby Double O brought out the rebuilt form of this locomotive uh, in the form of Barnstable and Dorchester. And so it gave you an idea of what the model would look like um, if it was de-streamlined. And uh, Hornby actually do do a de-streamlined model, but it's something here that I've wanted uh, one of these locomotives for so, so long. They were actually quite a late build for the Southern Railway, uh, designed by uh, Bulliard. And uh, actually this particular locomotive, I've looked it up, it was named at Sir Archibald Sinclair, built in 1947. It really only just saw Southern Railway action, and actually most of its career 
was uh, made on BR. It did actually survive, one of 20 of the class that did survive into preservation and so is still out there now. And then we can also see that included in this set we've got the three coaches but we need to have a closer look. So let's try and get into this. Uh, the box itself is a fairly flimsy card outer. I'll slide this out and uh, there are a few other bits and pieces in here. So let's just see what we've got here. Let's go through some of this. There's just a backing piece. It's my receipt for it. Yeah, West Country Battle of Britain class. This is just the instruction leaflet that we've got going in there. And it gives you an idea on a little bit of maintenance stuff uh, for things like oiling. And these these kind of models don't really need an awful lot of maintenance, but it's there just in case you need it. It does come with a certificate. So we've got here the Bournemouth Bell Certificate of Authenticity, and it is actually numbered. So this one here is number 369 and it was a limited run of 1500 indeed I actually I've gone and had a look online and they are still available new uh, uh, from a few online retailers but certainly if like me you've been lucky enough to find a shop that still has them in stock they're generally quite a reasonable price compared with what the full RRP is from Hornby for these coaches and this locomotive now so we've also got a few extra bits and pieces of detailing. We've got some pipework there which fits uh, for the drain cocks, I think these are, on the bottom of the cylinders. We've got some of the vacuum hoses. We've got a spare coupling there which uh, would slot into the NEM pocket on the front of the locomotive if you wanted for any reason to be able to run it backwards. And then we've also got a little bit of brake rigging, things like that, and a couple of ladders. If the model itself is going to live in a display cabinet, then you can fit a lot of these details and not have to worry about it. But on more train set curves, like me, you probably decide that actually uh, the best thing to do is to leave all that in the packet. The Bournemouth Bell service, introduced by the Southern Railway in the 1930s, uh, going from London Waterloo down to Southampton. And uh, these particular locomotives were built partially with that service in mind. The Pullman coaches themselves, uh, really nice there. The train itself would have been formed of between 7 and 12 of these coaches. But in the Hornby train pack, we get three, a far more manageable number there. Enough to make a, a full realistic look looking train but you can add to these and certainly I've got another four of these knocking about the house so I can run a full train of seven and actually if you look back through the channel uh, we did also review a Pullman observation car so if you want to go right right back to one of my really early videos and <laughs> excuse the fact that I probably look a little bit younger a little bit thinner um, there's also that which I might be running on this at the end of the train just a, a nice little bit of something extra this polystyrene insert is pretty uh, rugged and reliable here actually. It's going to really protect this well. There's a couple of holes at the back that you can kind of just push the uh, locomotive out with and uh, you need to do that because you don't want to grab onto any of the detail because when you're trying to pull it out uh, you're going to end up breaking something but there's quite a decent weight to these. Let me just try and carefully get that out. This is one of the newer Hornby fully super detail locomotives. It's still in the range today and it is quite an expensive RRP these days. But if you get a model that came out a little while ago such as this, it's the same standard and model but you can get it at a much more favourable price. Now the prototype being air smoothed in this way is actually quite slab sided and a bit like the old Hornby 00 Class 28 Metrovic Kobo. Sometimes models like this can actually be really difficult to produce accurately in model form because there's something about this slab side which is very unforgiving if anything is so much as slightly out of place. But what we can see here is the model has been realised incredibly well. You know it could have been a huge pit of faux pas 
but Hornby have managed to avert that minefield and they, they've produced a very, very accurate rendition of the real locomotive. We've got these box pox Firth Brown wheels, which uh, quite an interesting cast wheel. The idea behind them is giving a lot of strength in there from a cast wheel. We've got a lot of separately applied detail in terms of things like the brake blocks. And then also, as we saw before, in the packet, we've got the brake rigging, which we can uh, apply uh, down here if you want to. But obviously when the train's running around, you're not really gonna see that an awful lot. So it is entirely down to you. We've got some of the pipe work here, all accurately picked out in this sort of copper color. And even though they're made of plastic, they are really, really well done and well finished. And they actually do have a metallic look to them, which is nice to see. The valve gear is quite simplistic. And in their original form, uh, the bullied uh, valve gear was um, driven by a chain that ran in an oil bath. And this was one of the innovative aspects of the locomotive's design, which did prove a little bit troublesome. And certainly in later years, around 60 of the 110 of this class were rebuilt by British Rail into a uh, de-streamlined form with a more conventional Walshut's valve gear on the side. But uh, here we can see the rather simplistic outside of the chain driven example. We haven't got pickups on the front bogey, but what we do have is very cleverly hidden NEM pocket in there, which uh, we can see we've got the spare coupling in there, which we can add to that if you want to run it backwards. But generally speaking, these express locomotives wouldn't have, have pulled trains running backwards at all. So it's not really strictly speaking necessary and certainly without it, it does improve the look of the front of the locomotive. Now the front face again, captures that very distinctive look of this uh, class, the spam cams, really, really nicely. So we can see there, we've got the kind of slightly oval shaped uh, smoke box door, and then we've got the smoke deflectors there either side. The buffers are sprung, and they're actually quite a, a tight spring in there. So it's actually quite a pleasing feel. Uh, if that makes sense to you to these, they do feel like they mean business. We've got a separately applied uh, metal drawbar hook there. And then we can also see that there's a little slot on the buffer beam, which um, the vacuum hose can be added to from the separate detailing pack. On the top of the locomotive, it's, it's almost reminiscent of one of the uh, diesel class locomotives there. But we've got all of the rivet detail picked out incredibly nicely. And then we've got this rather large funnel, again, rather nicely picked out. And unlike some locomotives that have been introduced over the years, there's no screw in there. Uh, it's something that uh, having been brought up with Hornby 00 locomotives, I've become very used to the idea that you put a screwdriver down the funnel to be able to get the lid off. Well, none of that on here. So when you actually look down on the model as it's running, it doesn't detract from the looks. And actually when you look down, there's some kind of representation there of the blast pipe. However, it's open at the bottom. And one detraction for me is that it is possible to actually see the bogey at the bottom if you look at it at the wrong angle. The tempo printing on this is nicely realised. We've got the uh, lighter green stripes very, very neatly and accurately applied and the number there. A very, very peculiar numbering system employed by the Southern Railway and uh, was dispensed with completely and utterly by British Rail uh, once nationalisation came in, uh, but a year after the real locomotive was introduced into traffic. But here we have it uh, accurately depicted as 21C159. And as I said before, that equates to Sir Archibald Sinclair. Um, that was the name of the locomotive, but I can't actually see I don't think, no, I, I don't see any um, name plates on there. So I suspect that for certainly the uh, first few years of this locomotive's life, it went around uh, unnamed officially. We've got a very, very hefty rear pony truck and that is nicely put together and it's got a really, really smooth uh, motion. And what we can see there, when I move it from side to side, the actual tender drawbar there snakes as well it is wired up and um, there's a very innovative uh, pickup system between the tender and the locomotive to give more pickups 
uh, off the track and that aids the reliability of this locomotive no end and I do prefer these uh, to the later plugs that uh, Hornby and Backman use which plug to, uh, together the locomotive and tender and I find them very very prone to damage but in this case it's such a lovely simplistic design that is just a doddle to connect and disconnect. There is a pretty good weight to the locomotive which aids adhesion but also the tender which with those pickups also has a good weight to it and that also helps with its current collection. The coal in the bunker, I have to say, does look a little bit mm, not quite realistic, but certainly there is space in there that you could add a, a dusting of real coal dust over the top if you were so inclined. Then we've got the representation of the air tanks, very, very nicely done, and the uh, air streamlining, the air smoothing casing extends the length of the tender, and we get these sort of fins at the top where the plates go up and from the side give a nice smooth outline, but when looking down you can see all of this uh, detail in the top so it's really really nicely done and uh, obviously there as well we've got the sprung buffers on the rear and these really nice fine metal ladders too and then pocket on the back and the brake rigging as well has already been applied on uh, this particular model so unlike the locomotive you don't need to add them yourself we can see there where well, we've got the locomotive and tender all connected up there really is a grace and a presence to this locomotive and we see as well on the tender i just want to talk a little bit about that We've got the Southern on the side and again it's something that the Southern Railway did things very differently. The Great Western Railway may have fancied itself as being the pinnacle of railways but the Southern were kind of quirky and uh, weren't afraid to do things different from convention so they spelt, spelt their name out in full on the tender of these and really it is very much a statement here about the entire locomotive and the company that it was built for. Also when coupled together we can see there is a little bit of a gap between the two but it will go around some quite tight corners without it compromising too much of the uh, manner with which it's put together so there are a few things like that that we do forgive. We can see here we've got the uh, main box back in the polystyrene we've got these three coaches and just like the locomotive they push out using little finger holes in the back so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all three out, lay them down and then we'll take a good look at the details. We get three different coaches here, enough to make a short train but uh, Hornby also sold these and still do sell these separately and they reissue them with completely different identities uh, pretty much all the time. I don't think they've actually repeated any of the identities so the good thing about this is that I've got four of the uh, these coaches that were released separately a few years ago and all four of the coaches I already had I had completely different identities to these so I can still make up a very accurate train uh, without risking any duplication. We can see though with these that they do come ready fitted with the Bournemouth Bell name boards for the train and this is something that the sold separately coaches don't have and it's a shame in a way that it's uh, I've not seen about any name boards that you can get to add to them to make the whole train match but it looks uh, a little bit strange but it is entirely authentic the real coaches did have it just like this as well so uh, that is um, accurate even if it does look a little bit odd. We can see here that we've got uh, see, car number 31 this is a third class car we've then got Rosemary which I believe is a first class car and uh, then also here we've got car number 154 and this is a third class brake car so uh, with the other third class brake car that I've got downstairs I can have one at either end of the train and uh, it'll all look pretty good. These particular coaches, this is something that Hornby have really made their own, is the Pullman coaches and they've done a few different varieties and this has included the uh, 
six wheel bogeyed coaches which are really really nice as well and these particular the matchboard uh, finished coaches which I believe were built in the 1920s and also they do some steel sided ones as well but let's have a close look at these we've got the very distinctive Pullman style and they were very very different from the coaches that the main railway companies were making at the time we've got these very distinctive end vestibule doors with this is a very large oval shaped window and it's something that um, I always was drawn to even in the days of uh, when I had Hornby 00 as my childhood train set I did have the super detail uh, Pullman coaches that Hornby 00 produced and uh, I was always drawn to this particular shape of window it's very very distinctive and it's reproduced here by Hornby very very well now we're going to look as well at the tampo printing and it is very crisply applied and certainly with the match boarding finish on these it would have been very very easy for the tampo printing to mess up with this very very intricate crest that we can see it at either end of every Every single coach but it has been reproduced perfectly despite the rather challenging surface that it has been applied to we've also got the car names on there really nicely and also this lining again perfectly reproduced across the matchboard finish and really there is nothing that I can find fault with if we look to the interior through the uh, big square windows that we've got, I sounded a bit like a play school presenter there. Let's see what's through the square window. Well, certainly on these Pullman coaches, what's through the square window? A perfect interior. That's what's in there. And you can see we've got this rendition of the curtains and then the tables and the chairs. And something that I really do have to draw your attention to here is the table lamps that you see light up when the power is applied. Now on DC they obviously vary in brightness and intensity depending on the power that's being fed to the locomotive which isn't really quite practical but it's something that I can live with. However on DCC you don't need a DCC chip in each coach unlike some of the other DCC lit coaches that have been brought to the market more recently. On DCC the table lamps illuminate and stay illuminated. Perhaps not the best if you have them in sidings but how many people model carriage sidings? Not that many so I think that's a pretty good compromise. And we can see on the uh, bogies that the pickups for the table lights are very inobtrusively done with little tabs to the axles so one presumes that each axle is uh, bushed on one wheel only to insulate it and they're inserted back to front so that we get a uh, pickup from uh, one and return in the other. The underframe detail, again, really ex exquisitely put together. There's a lot of separately applied details here with the battery boxes, the brake cylinders, and uh, also we've got some air tanks there as well. It's really nicely done. The bogies themselves, to go back to them, we've got the uh, actual NEM pockets there are on a separate uh, close coupling mechanism that Hornby have on these so they are actually uh, reasonably independent from the bogey but you can see as we move the bogey the coupling extends to allow the trains to go round much tighter curves without any risk of buffer lock. The buffers themselves are unusually for uh, rolling stock fully sprung uh, then it does mean that uh, if you use some very close coupling you can actually get the buffers to do their job but uh, I suspect that most people would just leave them as a, a little bit of a curiosity there but really nicely done and we've got that distinctive uh, sort of elongated lozenge type shape with the rounded ends and they just really are nice additions there and they're, they're made from metal not plastic so they are actually pretty rugged. Going back to the bogeys so we've got the brake shoes all line up with the wheels as you would expect with a more modern super detail item of rolling stock and we've got the rendition of these fabricated um, side roads they're almost a bit reminiscent of Gresley bogies really really nicely um, replicated there in model form. Now the ends of these coaches again really nicely done. We've got these very very fat wide corridor connections on there. They're 
don't really look like they could work. They're, in that respect, they're, they're not quite as good as some of the more modern coaches that we've seen from, say, Backman. But even so, when these are all put together in a train, they, they do look the part. And they're reasonably close enough that you can kind of overlook the fact that they are closed up there and uh, don't extend to meet. We have a wealth of separately applied uh, piping and uh, handrail detail. So we've got this handrails on the ends, all nicely finished as separately applied uh, pieces, but they are actually coloured accurately and there's no bleed over between the white and the black. We've got a multitude of handles there on the doors doors at the other end as well and we've got these footboards too all exquisitely picked out in this sort of gold brassy colour and it really I can't find fault and believe me I'm looking for fault I want to give you the full lowdown on these and there is nothing to fault we've got some of the roof detail as well separately applied on there very very crisp it is just amazing the amount of details on these and when you buy them in a train pack like this you get such a tremendously good deal in the price for the locomotive and the three coaches to match i really cannot speak more highly of buying trains this way let's take a look at some of the other coaches there the first class uh, coach well we've got Again, really good rendition of the internal detail. We've got the same table lamps and uh, I'm not sure, slightly different window spacing. So it's not just a relivery of the same mould between these two. They are actually completely different body moulds. And that's always nice to see that that level of attention to detail has gone into accurately producing each of these coaches. So we also see there as well, on the third class car, we've got these circular, almost sort of like leaded glass windows at both ends. On this one, we have it only at one end. I believe they were the toilets in there. If we turn it over as well, we have the rendition on the other end of the circular window and accurately portrayed these these panelled sides the the printing on these is ever so crisp as well every single coach in this set and indeed the four other coaches that i've got downstairs there is not a hint of bleed over from any of the tampo printing so the quality control on these has really been well executed and they haven't let any duds get through that i've seen the brake end coach as well, we've got the accurate rendition of the brake compartment on the end, really nicely done. The different shaped door windows as well, nicely done. The attention to detail, they've captured every single nuance between the different uh, coaches in the Pullman stable. And really, I just, I, I feel like I'm gushing here on this, but it really does deserve it. So all in, this set, is absolutely astounding and for the price that i paid for it i got it from colcheth model center and i had a stall at uh, lee model railway exhibition but certainly when i had a quick look online available from a number of other sources still despite the fact that they've been around for a little while now and i can't speak more highly of this it is just a superb set and for the fact that i've been looking for the west country class locomotive for quite some time now i'm just so pleased to be able to uh, get one under such favourable circumstances. Now I know a few of you are going to ask when do we see it running and uh, it's a, a common thing people want to see it running and I completely sympathise with you but for technical reasons I haven't been able to run this uh, on film. I have test run it the locomotive and it does run ever so smoothly it's got a five pole skew wound motor in there so it is silky smooth as it runs but what we're going to do is in an up and coming video we're going to do a trains going by video in the shed with this full set so look out for that and if you can just hold off from that i do know that we haven't put any running footage in this video but it will come and it's something to look forward to well i hope that was informative to you thanks 
thanks for watching this and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have looking over these really really good uh, models here. Don't forget to like this video, share it too and also subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. Anyway, you take very good care of yourself and this is me Jenny Kirk saying until next time, bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you by my books Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House books 1, books 2 and also the wacky zany Life of Knobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.